Oh, good morning. Hey, this is Renaud. How are you doing? I'm good. Too many things happening on many fronts. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, how were the, how were your holidays? Yeah, it was good, except what it was just all in place, like no travels, so home and all these things around. Yeah, I managed to uh, sneak sneak my way back to France. For a few weeks. Oh, and you were able to ret even return, or, or you're still the in return France? to the U.S. is going to be kind of complicated. Ah, so you you are now in the close time zone to us, right? Uh, right now, I'm in a similar time zone. Definitely, I think you're one hour ahead of me, something like that. Uh, for me, it's five p.m. right now. Yeah, it's it's four for me. Alexander, we have the same barber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, stand up cut, six millimeters. Easy. Yeah, I, I just use number one, whatever that is on the on the on the brawn. <laughs> yeah, on our, on this side of the pond, we we have everything in millimeters. <laughs> Yeah, I, number one, I have no idea what that is. It's it's probably about that. It looks like about the same. <laughs> I, I, I've got I've got a closer shave thing on order. I, I'm I'm tired of using the razor. Yeah, time time to go electric. So, Mike, for, for you it's early morning, right? So it's like six in the morning uh, or something like. That. Yep, uh, nine actually. It's it's oh. already nine. Yeah, so oh, I've, yes, I've already been, East Coast. I've, I've already done a huge, some huge threads on Slack. <laughs> been been busy this morning. Good. All right, let's wait one more minute, and then I think we can probably start. I hear an owl. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. It's it's on my side. I'm in the countryside right now. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Uh, is the meeting recording? It is recording. I think we can probably start. This is. September 15th meeting. Um, I think we have three topics on the agenda, if I recall correctly. The first one, I think, is um, from Sasha. Uh, it's about, sorry, I'm opening the agenda at the same time on my side. Uh, it's about improvement in CRI APIs to report resources up and down between qubit and runtimes. The second one is uh, more or less just administrative straight stuff. Um, just a question to use SIG runtimes distribution list rather than, or mailing list rather than the um, COD mailing list that we have. I think it'll improve a bit some of the communication between SIG runtime. Um, just, and then overall, the last point is just discussing next step for CDI with respect to converging with NRI. And I think just generally, um, Questions on that front, or more about should we just merge the repositories? Um, how do we how do we move forward? Um, Sasha, do you want to start with that uh, with the the first step, first point? Um, and also, just a quick question: Can someone take notes on the Google Doc? Mike, since uh, I'm seeing you on the screen, can you <laughs> can you take notes on the Google Doc, please? Yeah, I'm I, I don't have my keyboard and my computer. Okay, I'll, I'll, let me let me find it and then we'll uh, we'll do that. Thank you very much. All right, Sasha, do you want to start? Uh, 
Yes, so uh, I wanted to share a thing. Um, uh, you might notice what in our GitHub uh, organization we created a new repository. Uh, it's called Resource Management Improvements Working Group. Uh, so the story behind this uh, repository is what uh, you've seen. Um, uh, Michael Crosby uh, did a presentation for Sigran Times when he presented some uh, some of his work in, in this forum and when Signode and so on. And um, we had a couple of uh, ad hoc conversation with him and actually with Eric Ernst and a few other people uh about what uh, what we are trying to do with nri and uh, some of our experiences and some of our ideas what we implemented in cri resource manager uh, and then there is also side no uh, side conversation it was about the scheduler extension uh to expose the node topology information uh to to the kubernetes uh, and when it was discussed on the SIG note, uh, Derek proposed to um, uh, to combine it with uh, node feature discovery uh, daemon. So uh, the topology and all the resources will be discovered by NFD and when NFD will be talking with uh, control plane. Uh, so uh by by doing that when we had this nfd conversation uh we started to talk with swati and with alexei uh about how to store the information and how to exchange the information between different components uh, about the resources uh and when we talked with, with michael uh we we discussed like bunch of improvements uh, for cri APIs about how we ex uh, exchanging the information between the levels uh, between the kubelet and be between the container on times and there are several things which kubelet most probably should not be doing uh, like like direct C group management like uh, assumptions of uh, how the layouts of the containers will be well how uh, uh, CRI is actually implementing the things. Uh, and when uh, there are related issues to that, uh, like um, like for VM-based runtimes, when the VM is created, as much as possible information about the, all the containers within Sandbox, all the init containers needs to be provided on the uh, create Sandbox uh, CRI call. Uh, the same goes also for any kind of update messages in, in CRI. So anything what uh, Kublet knows about updating, it needs to be passed down to CRI so all VM-based runtimes properly can uh, either react to those or well, in create stages prepare for all of those. Uh, what also led to uh, some of the ideas about uh, communicating uh, upwards or information about uh, what kind of resources uh, runtimes knows and uh, um, how we organize it. So in, in relation to this particular working group, I think uh, this is the way how we can uh, communicate about information, what kind of devices we discovered from CDI. But anyway, so this repository, what, uh, what I created, um, it has initial list of ideas and to-do items, what we had in our mind, uh, what we think it would be good to implement on CRI side or sometimes uh, some things in, on runtime side. Uh, there are a couple of to-do items for our project, uh, CRI resource manager. So we have some code implementation about the topology discovery, uh, and when for uh, managing block IO, uh, Intel RDT, what we want to split out and uh, make it as reusable libraries and when proposed to be uh, used in container D and cryo uh, as a well, import, imported com component. Um, 
So but, well, let's the story behind. Uh, if you see something what is interesting to you, if you uh, if you don't agree with something, uh, any comments are welcome. Any. Uh, so that's true. I, I, I didn't catch why we needed a new repo. Um, so is this is this like just because Cap wasn't good enough in Kubelet or the NRI stuff didn't have enough yeah. stuff? I mean, or the COD. NRI. NRI is not enough stuff uh, because practically NRI in the current implement uh, in the current design is just a set of uh, lifecycle hooks uh, for the containers, and we want to have uh, well based on what we did in the CRI resource manager is is complete state machine. So you you don't you are not only reacting to a single container or single pod. You need to have uh, some component which will be able to understand the whole uh, state of the system, especially for the scenarios like even you uh, trying to rebalance the resources. When you say the whole state of a system, are you talking about low level state for the container? No, I'm, 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 talking, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about information, every single uh, sandbox, every single container. In, in those, uh, oh, okay. So this is the Kubernetes replacement? Not Kubernetes. No, 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 not, not Kubernetes replacement. It's more about uh, uh, like inside runtime, something what can have the overall picture of, uh, of the whole uh, containers and all the sandboxes created. The reason why we created the repository. Uh, so Michael wanted to have uh, some place where he can create issues, assign it to exact people. And when we can start uh, drafting a set of caps. So like some- That's, that's why I was asking if this isn't a caps thing. It sounds like, I mean, sandbox status state, right? Is Kubelet in Signal. Yeah, but- and, and, and the container runtime CRI, you know, interface. Yes, but we are going to talk about the both parties, like upper layers with Kubernetes and the lower layers uh, container D and Cryo. Which is what Signode does. Uh, to some degree, yes, yes. And, and just, just to follow up, not just Signode, but there's a similar group um, that's been created. Uh, I need to find it, but I remember that Kevin Kluth from NVIDIA, who joined, I think, the previous meeting, so I can probably get him in the next one. Um, and a few other people were, were looking at something similar. Yeah, there's a lot of groups forming. That's why I'm trying to, trying to understand, do I, <laughs> which process are we under, right? Are we using the CAPS process, or are we just aggregating them? Are we trying to redefine CRI? Are we trying to, it, it seems like it's a lot when you say all the state, right? Uh, yes. So uh, my my idea, what like all these discussions will end up with uh, several caps. Like I, I can say like five plus, uh, right. based on current on, on current list. Uh, and we need to think about how we do it gradually. Uh, that's one thing. And we need to synchronize between both, between the runtimes and between the couplet. But that's so, not this group. I. I... I mean, I don't mind moving this group somewhere else if we need to be somewhere else. Uh, well, the reason why we created the repository in this organization is what, uh, uh, when we discussed it with Michael, I, I proposed it, let's create a new one. He said, but we already have something. Uh, that's why I asked it permission I from, from yeah. you guys. <laughs> I know, we, yeah. I, I think some of it is to avoid too much fragmentation. Um. And especially like we are mostly all the same people. Now you, Mike, uh, uh, Michael, Renault, we're all, we're all no, about I, the same. I, I agree with what you're saying. I agree that um, there's definitely a component that is container runtime that kind of uh, is super interesting with this group of people and is super helpful. Uh, and I think it kind of makes sense. I mean, it, when we, as a group, try to collaborate on a pull request, uh, if we open a pull request against the cap repositories, it's kind of complicated. Um, and I agree that having staging ground is, 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 is a really nice place to have, or just 
staging ground where we can just discuss things is nice. Um, I think that's that's a good idea to have that. It's just that I think um, when we go through that process, we got to make sure that uh, we also include these other groups that are already here that are kind of discussing the issues around just um, scheduling, uh, around topology. Um, and I want to make sure that, um, and this is something that I wanted to, or at least that I think like we, we were careful when discussing with Signode and I think Michael Crosby was careful about. There's like kind of existing primitives around scheduling. Um, and if we are trying to replace them or make them or evolve them, we need to have the people that wrote them to be in the meeting, right? Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it gets pretty big in scope very quickly. Well, uh, so far, like all the items, what we discussed, it's not touching too much with core scheduling for functionality. Uh, the only thing which is related to scheduling was this uh, discussion about NFD, enhancing NFD and storing where inf hardware information in the CRD objects. Uh, yep. And both uh, Alex no, and I, I, I agree. I think, are aware like, of it. I, I agree with what you're saying. I think like one of the big, I think, um, touch points or um, area that there there might be like discussions or different opinions is going to be around um, the CPU manager, the topology manager, whether that should be around kubelets or it should be around the container runtime. Um, I think like part of this discussion might be super helpful if we as a group start writing down some of the use cases and what, and some of the points of contention where we're having a hard time doing stuff. We kind of did that for um, CDI in some parts of it. Um, and I think like if we're, if we're going to look at the topology manager, the C groups management, um, the, the new man manager, um, it might be important to help in our efforts to just write down some of the things that we're, we, we see as a blocker to enable things, right? Well, uh, at the moment, I would say I don't have any big plans uh, to start in this, uh, to open this can of worms about the topology manager in, inside Kublet. At the moment, wh what I'm mostly interested in is uh, like duplicating the Docker shim. So we have only one single interface, uh, how we communicate with runtimes. Uh, and when like majority of improvements of uh, runtime interface. When you say duplicating the Docker shim, are you talking about cloning it or? No, de de deprecate, so, so absolutely. De deprecating, oh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. So I think that's already underway, right? I think uh, DIMS is taking the next step there. And yeah, DIMS last week created where it. Yeah, yeah, it came as fast. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the second thing I wanted to just give a heads up here is like Derek and I are going to, in today's signal, we are going to propose uh, taking CRI out of alpha. So now I think I want to raise it here. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to raise it here. Like, like we, don't, we don't get fractured across too many groups. And like, we don't want to slow that down too, because there's some deadline we have upstream to get that moving, right? So the, the plans that we have, like you want to make a lot of changes, are they gradual or blocking or, or things like that? So uh, we're only probably blocking. Uh, it was the idea about the, uh, communicating the, f like from the runtimes towards the Kubernetes at the list of available resources. I think this is only the breaking change. Uh, where ours, uh, uh, what we had in mind, it was more about like provide more information in existing messages. So for example, like uh, creates and box will have not only were just like empty message saying like, this is the name of a set box and this is annotations. It will also have the list of uh, like init containers, normal containers, and the list of resources what is uh, going to be used in this and container. Like when, when, like what, like uh, 
create container, it will have resources a bit more. Update uh, container resources will have a full list of resources, okay. like web. Yeah, I, I think th those make sense. And I think one more thing probably in the same vein, I don't know if uh, Mike brought it up in the past was the image pull in the sandbox context is another one. So uh, adding that to the run pod sandbox call as well. So we can do the image po pull inside the sandbox C group. Yeah, that'd be great. We yeah. really need a uh, an yeah. image caching policy to be you know received from the Kubelet. Yeah. The Kubelet. So, yeah, and uh, Manal, I, I saw in the today's SIG note agenda about this uh, taking it to Roberta, so that's why I wanted to, to talk first right. here so, about, yeah. about it. Yeah, I, I feel like it's still okay to move it to beta and then add these things. It's not the final version, right? We don't want to block what's already there and stable in a way. That'll help deprecate Docker shim and move forward. And then we keep discussing these new items and keep them moving. Regarding moving it to beta, if we can uh, fit into the change from alpha to beta some of the new items in the structures, like for example, like including this additional fields for resources, it would be yeah. great. Yeah, I think yeah, like, that, that's sort of the problem is as soon as you change it, then you're back in alpha, right? right. Yeah. We, we, we sort of need to GA the original version so that we can, we can move on to a point release and, and add new additional function on, you know, on a switch. So we know when that uh, capability is available. Mike, but uh, actually like adding some fields, which is optional for on time to react on, I think it's a compatible change. Yeah, it, it is. So it, it, it's not, so my understanding only uh, changing the version number like from, uh, let's say uh, like alpha one to alpha two or, or, or something, uh, it means only if those versions are completely incompatible and we need to uh, transformation between the well, well, it also means that we need to look at the new, the new additional services, the capabilities are added, you know, and it, there's gonna have to be some, you know, effort on it. They they have a different qualification for when an API goes, you know, GA. Um, they're, but they're, they're pretty good with, it's okay if you've got two versions. But since we haven't even got to version one yet, because we keep wanting to add more stuff, it's, it's been slowing it down, right? Just, just a minor heads up. If, it'd, be, it'd be better if we could have a point release or, you know, we've been using annotations um, with, you know, without modifications for a long time. But I, I agree with you, it would be nice if we could just quickly go to GA and, and then modify the, the CERA API to have additional extensions, right? Well, in, in, in set of APIs, how I've seen uh, it evolve within Kubernetes, like, what are, uh, like bit, between all the changes, like alphas, betas, and going to GA, where are some uh, sometimes compatible, sometimes incompatible changes. Yeah, not backwards. Right? Yeah, well, of course, like not backwards, but like adding the new functionality, it, it, it was usually okay. By the way, about the using of annotations. Uh, I, I know it's completely not about the devices, but uh, one thing which I, I wanted to say. So in CRIRM, when we were implementing the block IO support and um, RDT support, we practically implemented the idea of the classes. So like something, uh, some, some resource class, which can be identified by one single name. And when we bypassing annotation, we saying this container for this particular resource belongs to this class. So for example, like we, we can have, uh, let's say like gold, silver, bronze for, for the block IO throttling. And when we can say, well, this container is gold uh, IO references, this container is silver. And, and similar to RDT. Um, so practically this pattern is something what uh, similar to, to, to the degree to, um, uh, to the sec comp model. So uh, from upper layer, we just passing the information what this container belongs to this particular ID 
and how this ID is expanded on the host uh, to a particular uh, set of settings, uh, it's done, done on the host, like seccomp profiles are present on the host. So uh, I, I think uh, in the long term, it would be good to somehow generalize the same idea of what we can uh, have, like not only seccomp source or similar, but other resources like that. What do you think, gentlemen? I think it sounds like a good idea, but I think then we'll have to make this uh, concept the same across Kubernetes. Like I immediately QoS classes for C groups come to mind. Uh, you, though I, I don't think anyone would want to change any, uh, anything with C groups V1, but with C groups V2, there might be some changes coming to the QoS classes, the best effort guaranteed and uh, uh, burstable. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> do, do, do you see those as parallel to uh, these, or those are kind of more fixed where we don't see any? I see, I see. I see it parallel because you might have uh, like different profiles for for right. different type of resources. Right. So, for example, like the blo block IO is one profile, but memory and CPU is another profile. So the current problem with QoS classes is what we are calculated uh, based on only CPU and memory. And uh, I, I think all this thing will again will be more complicated as soon as we will get fully functional vertical port after scale. So like the classification on the container start or container admission is not the same after when the scale of adjusted parameters. Right, the, thus the interaction with the schedulers and such, right? Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, like the QoS classes, it was good in the beginning, but I think we we already well, grow all up from those like small child boots. I think that, that sounds like an idea worth exploring. But now I think like, I, I feel like we should take a pause and define a roadmap because when like Renault started CDI, it was very, the scope was well defined, but now it, it isn't clear to me. Like we are taking on a lot of ideas. A lot of those ideas sound like they need to be tackled, but what is the order in which we are tackling them and what is the scope of each one? Like some are more well defined than others. Like I think resource classes have been discussed upstream for a while. Uh, like it just jogged my memory that yes, I've heard this before. So, and so, well, so some, uh, some are more controversial versus some are not where okay cdi the is just scope to the runtime we kind of reached agreement we can take it to the next step but some of the other ideas that we, you talked about now will probably need more discussion and uh, coordination with other groups absolutely and uh, well my my uh, wording about resource classes was incorrect so i i know i, I don't have a better name for it and I know what for many people it uh, rings the bell for previous discussion, but what I'm talking is different compared to previous ones. Yeah, anyway. it rings the Liberty Bell, man. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, warning, warning. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I, th I think like lots of great ideas were thrown out. Uh, and I agree with Renaud that having some kind of roadmap would be super helpful for these ideas. Here's what I would suggest is just write down some blurb for each of these ideas and what you kind of expect in terms of effort, in terms of talking to different people and maybe like give your idea of priorities, send an email and then we can probably like discuss that on the, on, on the mailing list from there on, right? So uh, I already dumped a list of uh, initial ideas to, to this repository, which I created two weeks ago. Uh, so I, I think I'll take a stab at it then. I think most people are not subscribed to um, the PRs and maybe the commits that are already present. Um, that's why maybe we haven't, we hadn't noticed, um, but I'll definitely take a stab. I think email is probably the easiest way to reach out everyone here. Uh, and then the next one is going to be GitHub issues and tagging them. Yeah. Yeah, I was just actually noticing that I wasn't subscribed. 
So I'll make sure to subscribe to the GitHub. Yep. All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about, Sasha? Um, probably not. Just just one more comment. So. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Ronald, you, you mentioned what like initial scope of CDI. So the last uh, year when we were talking with uh, Renault uh, about the idea of improving with CDI devices, we, we talked about like two steps. Like one step is uh, about how we solve it on the runtime level. And second step, how uh, it will be exposed to ex uh, like upper levels like Kubernetes and so on. We had some ideas. So, um, I think like, uh, it, it's, it's not really expanding too much scope, right. but it, it will be linked at some point, right. uh, what we have listed here. So, so I think like till, till the last two, three meetings, we were very focused on the low level runtime one where we kind of reached agreement. So I think maybe like we should start discussing the next one uh, that comes on top and then the plan for actually implementing the lower level one in the runtimes. Uh, and I think like, I was more commenting about the additional things that we've been discussing, not CDI itself, which seems smaller yeah. in, in scope. Yeah, yeah, yeah I completely. I think you, you. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Go no, ahead. I was going to say, yeah, if, if we can keep CDI on the enabling side, you know, and just work with those other groups, I think we'd be better off. If we create new groups that com you know, compete with them, it's going to be hard to interact with them at the same time, right? I, I don't really care how the groups are named it or, or whatever. It's just like we have some sort of people uh, everywhere who is interested. That's, that's in true, topic. but they're not all at every meeting, right? <laughs> true. Well, well, uh, that's why I'm trying to combine everyone saying like, <laughs> okay, this is the list of the things what we want to work on. Like I know what all, not all of them are resulted to particular caps. So once we have a caps to, to one project to an hour, we can put a link saying like, okay, this item is done, link it, the cap is over here. Or Fair not done, enough. draft Draft is located over here, contribute. So, so basically you were trying to put together your scenarios and, and it widened out really fast, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's fair enough, I got it. Um, just Coming back to what I think you, you did touch a, a, an interesting point that's kind of ill-defined, which is how, how CDI will change the interactions between Kubernetes and the runtimes. And that's definitely something that's kind of blurry right now, and which will probably need us to involve maybe a few other people on the signal. Uh, but that's definitely work in progress. And I think like we had a, like we had a few set of slides, but it, it definitely needs to be material, materialized and something more than just like a, a, an architecture diagram that's kind of that vague right now. Yeah, I think. And I agree for now. Yeah, I, I Sorry, think like at, least, at least we should have something that captures our current understanding and what we've discussed so far. Or maybe we, we could have it on the agenda for next week or whenever. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, in, in this repository, what I created, uh, I'm I was mostly talking about like more native resources, so like the CPU and memory. Like one thing which really bothers me for quite a while uh, inside the Kubernetes is what like Kubernetes has its own assumption about what what is available on the system, and uh, the runtime might have absolutely different. Uh, understanding what is actually available. So for example, a container D or cryo might uh, run not within the topsy group, but might be isolated in some slice where not all the resources of the system uh, are available. Uh, and, 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 and similar. So I, I think though, I think what's uh, like the, the way it's worked so far is like runtime is dumb. Kubelet has the overall picture and it tells the runtime to do these things and now we are finding gaps that hey this is not enough if i want to do an image pool in the pod sandbox i need to know the pod sandbox slice name in the image pool and somehow change that interaction that's one example so like i yeah, think we uh, need to come up with like exact scenarios where we feel that we may benefit from the runtime getting more information running the slice doesn't 
sound like a good exam running in the slides doesn't sound like a very specific bad example to me because like yeah the containers how to run inside the pod slice right so that's a basic kubernetes uh, assumption so i no, I, I, mean, I, I mean i mean the hierarchy of the things so i know what for example at and t for way deployment way uh, way installing the kubernetes in a way what we have uh, only subset of CPU cores are available for Kubernetes and the rest are infrastructure CPUs for like high speed network stuff. And we had the problem of isolating Kubernetes what like no, not take those ones. But it's one example. But okay. what I'm more talking about is what we, we have, we have a problem between Linux and Windows. So the kubelet knows a lot about the Linux and does the assumptions on, on the Linux side. But for the Windows, it says like, oh, well, CRI, please run it somehow. I don't know, but you run it. Uh, and the same thing was the idea of uh, virtual kubelet where the, uh, like the implementation of the container uh, execution is just saying like, I know this set of resources, give me the container and I will figure out how to run. So based on those two things, uh, I, I was thinking what we need to a bit shift the roles, like Kubernetes knows what to run and runtime knows how to run. Right. That's big yep, and bringing those together is difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think like even the example you just gave to me, right, like the at and case, I would imagine immediately that, yeah, there'll be some flag to Kubelet telling it, okay, these are the only CPUs that are available to Kubernetes and you are only available to, you're only allowed to pass those down to uh, the CRI for the, for the workloads. So uh, uh, for that example, can you like give more details on how you think uh, the runtime would solve it as opposed to solving it in the Kubelet? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just trying to get solid examples where we feel that the split is not good enough. Right so in, in, in this particular example, how it works is what, uh, yes, Kubelet has with flags about like system reserve it and uh, Kubelet reserve it, uh, uh, C groups. And you can specify actually the parent of the C group where Kubelet will start uh, creating the hierarchy of uh, C groups for, for the containers. Uh, the problem is what Kubelet was written uh, during several years and by different people with different subset of the minds. So like everything what is topology related, it doesn't care about those uh, C groups hierarchies. What it does, it just calls uh, C advisor, give me machine info, C advisor says, well, this is what all the CPUs, what I detected from the system. And when CPU manager says, oh, I have this amount of CPUs. And the same goes to um, um, the Kubelet um, uh, this allocatable and uh, available uh, resources, uh, which is uh, submitted to node uh, status uh, part of a, of a node object. So it, it also does exactly the same. So it says, oh, okay, I detected from C advisor this amount of CPU total in the system, this amount of memory total in the system. I have a kubelet flag says what system reserve it is X amount of memory and X amount of CPUs. So it just cuts it and that's it. So it doesn't really calculate what is actually set in the like parent C group object if it's uh, specified or complete, and and so on. So yeah. it, as soon as you start to do uh, either partitioning of your resources or like some non-trivial setup, it's <laughs> you can uncover any <laughs> many of interesting bugs. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Can I quickly just time box this topic for the next nine minutes so that we still have 10 minutes for the next two topics? Yeah, I think uh, at least what I wanted to say, I'm already done, so we can talk about other topics. Sounds good. All right. Um, so I think like, I mean, I think you brought a few very interesting points, just, just to close on this. And, and just a lot of food for thoughts. And 
I think like at least I'm I'm very interested in contributing um, and to any just effort that you want to start on this. I'll, I'll take a look at the repository. I linked to it in the chat. Uh, feel free to link to any issues that you think are worth looking at too. Um, so the next topic is more administrative. Um, the mailings that we've been using has been mostly for agenda items and just um, summarizing notes. I think the other discussions, we tend to have them on GitHub. Um, I was suggesting to just uh, use SIG Runtime's uh, mailing list instead of um, the uh, CDI mailing list. Um, just makes it easier for SIG Runtime to see what we're doing uh, and have some more context when um, they are presenting some of the effort of this group. Um, what do people think about this small change? No opinion? It, uh, it depends on scope. <laughs> I, I think like for, for now, we, we have probably 10 emails and it's mostly just um, agendas and notes. So it kind of makes sense to me that if this is what we're going to use a distribution list, we might as well include SIG runtime or even just send our emails to SIG runtime. I don't know if every, is, is everyone subscribed to SIG runtime? Yes. Not yet. I do but not, but I can not subscribe. OK. Well, I mean. For the people who have it, it that's it, runtime under CNCF. Not, there is no SIG runtime on Kubernetes. Oh, yeah, yeah, SIG runtime under CNCF. All right. Um, I'll, 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 I'll sync with Ricardo, and I think I'll, I'll retire the um, Container orchestrated device distribution. This where I'll just point it to SIG runtime. That might also be just a solution. Just send it to SIG runtime. Um, okay. The, so the next one is really just um, this one. It was quite a very, an easy topic. The next one is, I think on the last meeting we kind of agreed just to try to have um, the NRI and CDI ID converge. Um, my question is more tactically. How does that look like? Um, we had this idea of contributing the CDI repository to the NRI repository. Um, it's still like, I, I'm i okay with doing that. It's just, I'm having a hard time figuring out what does it look like? Um, does it look like just a directory where we have the spec? Um, kind of a conversation we should also have with Michael Crosby, but how do we how do we do the next steps? Do we start a, an email thread? Do we start a discussion on Slack? Um, what do people said, around this or in here think? Well, I, I think oh, portions of our uh, our output need to be there if if that's the, yep. if that's the right repo for the uh, implementation. Uh, so we what, we we look at it more. Sorry, go ahead. What go I ahead. discussed it with my, Michael Crosby is what uh, the NRI scope. What he initially proposed, it was not uh, well not enough for at least what things what we are trying to solve. Right. So one of the uh, outputs of this uh, list of items what I created we, we need to do is it will be what we what will be the next steps of ideas what we have and what Michael have. So, so I don't, I don't think you, there, there is an exact future of how we can do it. Right. So I think I think you weren't here in the last meeting so let me summarize it up to you I think a bit. Um, with Michael, we thought that it kind of makes sense, at least like we had a lot of similarities between the NRI and the CDI uh, IDs. And I think just talking a bit um, through and presenting a bit CDI to Michael, um, it sounded like a reasonable ID to try and kind of have the IDs converge. Um, and have instead of having the NRI spec and the CDI spec, maybe you have something, a, a single spec that kind of c conveys both both IDs because we thought that they weren't conflicting, but they were actually complementing each other. Right. And I think that's fair for the CDI, right? Um, it, it sounded like what Alex is talking about is 
a little bit higher level, expanding it. Right. Well, I I might be uh, misunderstanding what uh, NRI is proposing, but from from what I've seen before, it was uh, like very limited set of, well, I would say hooks in the con single container life cycle, what can be, uh, what can be done. Am I incorrect or? Are you, sorry, um, are you talking about the NRI or the CDI? NRI. Um, it is, and I think what we're talking about here is expanding it. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. No, I just say the the very first code drop. Yes, it was it was limited in its capability, but um, that's it's not just for containers. It's also for pods, right? And it's not just for between the create and the run step. It, it it's also going to be expanded to support pre create, post stop, all those sorts of you know, capabilities. And it's not just hooks because it sits at, you know, it, it sits at the integration point for CRI, um, you know, between the, between CRI and the container runtime implementations. Um, I, I think there's, a, there, we can do pretty much what we need on the CRI side of CDI, but if we need any more scheduling and integration, yeah, then it, it, it sit, that's back in Kubelet, right? Or, or yeah. and or scheduler through the API uh, API interaction API server. Okay, but that's exactly what, what I was mentioning about where similarities between NRI and CRI resource manager. What we have, so we have a code which we planning to extract out of CRI RAM, which actually implements exactly the same um, like overall state of the uh, system like the, the whole sandbox, the whole things. And when pluggable set of policies where you can get exactly the same events uh, like NRI is describing, like create sandbox, create containers, updates and so on, and get all this information. So that's, that's what I was saying. Like we, we, we wanted uh, with Michael to merge those two ideas into one library which can be reused. Got it. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> okay. That, so that's... so for, for him, like our, our CRI RM is implemented as a proxy between the Kublet and uh, CRI. So like the, right. like the socket, socket injection, practically. For Michael, for his setup, it was not possible. That's why he tried to do implement it in, uh, inside uh, container D. And I, I was saying to him like, okay, well, we have that code. It's, Okay, let's make it as a library and let it reuse it, reusable between container D and, and cryo and have the same uh, functionality. Makes sense. All right, and so so what was the sorry, just taking a step back, what was the question you were asking at the start? Well, my, my question was about like merging CRI and CD, or, or, sorry, CDI and the NRI. I think what uh, the question about how to merge it, it, it should wait until this discussion about what, uh, like how much of the existing code we can reuse between CRI RM and uh, NRI, or what Michael is want. And that might reshape how the, this convergence between those two projects uh, might have. Yeah, yeah, that's my understanding of what Mike want, Michael wants to do, Mr. Crosby. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so, I guess my question is, how can we accelerate a bit some of that, some of these conversation? Um, because I'd be interested in having some kind of maybe alpha somewhere, maybe to to start. I mean, to start showing a, a bit some of the results of our discussions. I think uh, let's ask uh, Mike Crosby to, to join and Eric to join and uh, let, let, let them So see maybe, maybe, maybe I guess that's the question for, I'll, I'll send an email then to try to have them join in the next meeting. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I'm looking at this a bit tactically and I'm trying to get something like, if, if possible, if I could 
try to accelerate it and have maybe timelines by the end of the year for maybe an alpha or a beta and at least in continuity and I'll, I'll probably bug uh, Mr. Murnau to, to, to figure out what he thinks about for having a, an alpha or beta in, in Podman 2. In, in cryo, probably. Or, cryo. Uh, yeah. Oh, right, cryo. Well, I mean, both, right? We're, we're hoping to, to be able to do something yeah. like so Podman I, dash dash. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll uh, make sure we get enough representation from the Podman team as well. So I'll ask uh, one of them to chime. Okay. I'll, I'll send an email with uh, everyone in the room that's participated in this meeting. Sorry. And uh, we'll try to have some discussion for the next meeting. All right, I, I think that's a yes for everyone. Um, and I'll also ask you guys, or everyone, and sorry, everyone in the room to try to take us another stab at the specs or at the PRs that are standing. Uh, let me know if there's some work I need to do again on these PRs so that we can have some um, something that can be built on or imported, a Go module want to be imported. Right. So, you know, I presume Michael was searching four scenarios with Alex and Alex is providing them a whole whole set of scenarios, right? That's part of that conversation. Well, at least what we know. Sure, fair, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, that, that 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 last time I checked, that's what he was looking he was looking for more you know scenarios. And that's probably where we can help most is is to you know pull in these additional scenarios on what needs to happen at the NRI CRI level so that we can we can make those modifications where they need to be done, right? And hopefully in a common way so that all the container runtimes can, can implement it the exact same way. That would be nice. We don't want to, we don't want to fork anything. Definitely. All right, cool. All right, um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, and was there anything anyone wanted to discuss is there maybe this is something that I, I, I wanted to ask like um, some of the people in the meeting here are kind of new um, and some of the people in the meeting might just are, are just interested um, it'd be interesting to have um, your opinion if there's some context we need to build uh, from time to time um, if there's like documents we need to point people to um, or just uh, yeah, I mean, restart some of the conversation to to help people understand what we're doing. Um, having feedback on this um, would be super helpful for from people for people that are new. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think we can just just lost when you you person. Oh well. <laughs> All right. Let, Feel free to send an email if there's, uh, or even reach out to me, or I think every anyone, uh, if if there's context we need to provide to people that are new, we'd be happy to to, to provide it. I think. And that's it. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, you you all get five minutes back. That's not a lot, but. <laughs> Uh, and thanks a lot for the conversation. I think like these were super interesting. Yep. Have a great one, everyone. Yep. Yeah. So the next one is in two weeks, right? Yep. Uh, I'll put up some of the items that we said on the agenda and that's it. Okay. And I'll try to ping with Eric and Michael as well. Definitely. I'll, I'll... I'll take some of the notes you put, Mike, and then I'll send an email uh, to everyone just to have some of the AIs. Okay. Great. Bye. Bye.